today I wanted to talk a little bit about how to work on a film. Um, I've already done a little bit of a study on uh, film media entertainment globally, um, but I wanted to kind of look at some of the practical ways um, to get involved in film um, in this modern age. Um, I thought this was a pretty interesting picture here um, of a film being done. I just wanted to start with this. Uh, so you'll notice a couple interesting things about this Hollywood sign here. Um, it's a little bit difficult to see, but I'll zoom in. Um, first of all, uh, it's not a very hard sign to make. Um, you notice that you make this sign, put it up pretty easily, and uh, maybe uh, it says something interesting. So here's another um, kind of thing that I've been working on. Um, and you can see the global film industry here. Uh, let's go take a look at the data to see how new this is, if it's got the numbers in here somewhere still. So uh, it looks like uh, we'll compare this from when well, we had the ranks from before to uh, now. So it looks like India is only getting more involved in films. So this was the data from 2019 and 2018, so you can kind of see. Um, and... Uh, so there is a source for this. Um, we can take a look at where this came from here. Um, Film in India. Let's take a look at that. Um, Film Federation of India, apparently. So from the web page here, it looks like we don't really know um, who actually is, what the numbers are, or anything, really. So um, I wouldn't really trust these numbers, but we can kind of guess that probably China and India are both uh, pretty big uh, in the film industry just because of the number of people that they have. Um, so, uh, but a particular interest here is also Nigeria. You can see that um, if you didn't weren't aware of Nigerian film already, apparently Nigerian film has almost doubled uh, since um, you can see the 20, 2019, but it says citation needed. So who knows what the actual numbers are, um, but someone has edited this Wikipedia here and said that it's uh, significantly more. So if you're not aware of this already, uh, I'm trying to make a film. Um, it's going to be an awesome film. So uh, I just wanted to see what was going on uh, in the film industry and kind of see if what I could learn uh, from potentially working uh, in the film industry and kind of studying this here. So there just is a lot of changes that need to be made. So there's something called the Big Five uh, in the film industry. And you can see here you have Columbia Pictures, Paramount Pictures, Universal Studios, Warner's, and uh, Walt Disney. So there's Burbank out in here, um, which is not really part of normal part of LA. Um, so I wish I could get a better map to show you. But if you're familiar with Los Angeles, um, I mean, my personal nice area is basically Santa Monica and Hollywood Boulevard. Um, and apparently if you read the story of the film industry in LA, a lot of these big companies actually moved outside of down even downtown LA and then they also moved outside of away from the uh, lake uh, the excuse me ocean front so they actually took le less desirable places so if you're working or even doing a film at one of these places it's actually um, not as desirable um, of a location um, however they do have access to um, kind of Burbank and maybe uh, people that are more interested in working just for money uh, in Los Angeles. So it kind of made uh, Burbank area here, San Fernando Valley, really, I'm sorry, um, that this San Fernando Valley um, is kind of, let me see if I can get an image here and show you where it is. Um, but you can kind of see Google Maps, satellite image here, I'll load this up hopefully. So you can kind of see that this San Fernando Valley is kind of stuck out here and it's just not as desirable of a place to live but um it is very much connected to the film industry which you can see is kind of in burbank and then there's a couple other spots right in here so um but uh hollywood boulevard kind of running along here i believe um is kind of like the main kind of interesting area and then you also head out to uh what is it uh santa barbara so there's definitely some outside, so it's kind of a debate, right? Like there is some nice areas um, kind of back in here, but also it gets more polluted because the pollution kind of gets trapped 
uh, in the mountains here a little bit. So that's another kind of concern uh, to think about. Another interesting thing to realize about cinema in the United States is that when it first started, um, kind of in the big television era, um, I don't want to give an exact date, but it says, uh, let's say, 1913 to 1969, um, a lot of the films actually came, it was, it was kind of a mix because there was uh, Broadway shows being done in New York, and at that time, um, a lot of the actors actually lived in New York City, and then there was um, you know, a little bit more political um, relationship between uh, New York, um, you know, and uh, kind of the political situation there in Hollywood. Um, so basically, things moved out west um, to Los Angeles. Um, the weather was a little bit nicer there, um, especially in the winter time. Um, and then that was kind of the foundation of Hollywood. And there was a lot of land there, um, cheap land. Um, so at the time, I would say that <clears throat> relative to San Francisco area, um, probably, um, you know, it's a little bit uh, more hilly, uh, I think, in San Francisco, at least uh, Hollywood area. And uh, there's Hollywood Hills, it says <clears throat> here. But <clears throat> that's, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a little bit different. It's a little bit warmer in L.A. than in San Francisco, and that's maybe one other reason, um, just as you get down towards Latin America. So, um, but really, the film industry is global, um, and uh, but even still this day, uh, you know, companies like uh, YouTube still have a pretty big presence in, uh, I believe, Santa Monica. They have a, or right near um, the Venice Beach area, they have a pretty big office there. So... Uh, YouTube is a huge presence uh, in terms of the media and other things. So going back to this picture here, you know, this is a, a film project being done. And when you think about it today, everything's pretty much, a lot of films are being done on the iPhone or, uh, you know, an Android phone. And they're just a little device. And here, you know, you have a whole setup. You have a couple guys here all filming. And then we don't even see the actors. We just see uh, the film crew here. Um, so I kind of wanted to, like, get an idea for how this whole situation works, um, why this happened, um, and then also look at just uh, some details about what's going on internationally. So if you go to Wikipedia, you can see this article called Film Industry, um, Wikipedia right up here, and uh, they, at the bottom of it, they show the numbers uh, internationally. Now, these are actually checked uh, by uh, you know a variety of people on the internet, so I mean, it's, uh, you know, we don't really know what the accuracy of this is, but um, these are the numbers that we see on Wikipedia, and uh, it's actually kind of hard to find uh, the data on this. Uh, now, the film that I'm working on is actually about, uh, it's trying to like look at what it might be like uh, at the times where a film is kind of supposedly ending on Earth, uh, kind of like the last days, um, kind of uh, end times, if you will, of what would happen uh, for a Earth uh, and how that would affect uh, the media industry, film, and a lot of other things. So again, uh, here's a list that I don't necessarily trust, but it has uh, the worldwide gross revenues. <clears throat> it turns out that uh, actually the the highest grossing film of all time, um, which almost had a level of three billion dollars, was in 2009. Uh, it was a movie called Avatar. I wanted to add one more thing here. Um, this is with inflation. So you can see that there was actually one other film, uh, kind of, uh, I would say, a racist film, uh, back in, about, that got about $4 billion. So you can see here that um, there's other ones, uh, given uh, the change. I don't know why I messed up some things there. But. So in the fine print here, you'll see for Avatar, um, that it was done by 20th, 20th Century Fox, and then three other kind of lesser known areas, at least to me, um, production companies. So for some reason, all this said and done, um, it doesn't really say much about how essentially this picture is made, um, the, the picture, kind of the picture of the picture, right? So. You know, as we look at Hollywood and we say, you know, the basic question is how to film work, how do we get actually produce a film ourselves, 
um, that's really going to help the world. Um, what does that mean, actually? So you'll see down here um, that the budget for this film was <clears throat> about a quarter of a billion dollars, and the uh, revenue was about $3 billion. So obviously they made money, but that is a heck of a lot of money um, to be spending on a film. So you'll see here that uh, it wasn't the most expensive film ever. Um, in fact, some of these other films were more expensive uh, than Avatar. So <clears throat> these it's just a, an amazing amount of money. Um, and man, look at this. So you're just talking, you know, basically hundreds of millions and billions and billions and billions of dollars. So that's a lot of money to be spending. And it really says something about... Uh, a lot of things. So I really wanted to look at this carefully and ask some uh, hopefully deep questions about what's going on.